Hello, Mathies Gatos here. Welcome to section 11.2, Combinations. Let's begin by recapping what a permutation is. A permutation is an arrangement of objects in which order is important. So for example, if I have three letters A, B, C, there are six permutations of those letters. Those are all the possible arrangements because the order is different in each of them. So permutations are things like numbers, words, codes, passwords, lineups, arrangements, where I have assignable roles, tasks, or positions. Order is important. A combination, however, is an arrangement where order is not important. So in that last example, when I had three letters that had six permutations, those same three letters only have one combination because ABC is the same as ACB and so on. Order is not important. So when we're thinking about that, you know at your locker how you have a combination lock? Well, only one locker combination will work. If your combo is 924 and you enter in 429, it's not going to work. So really, we should be calling those permutation locks. Combinations, therefore, are not a combination lock, they're a fruit salad. The order of the fruit in a fruit salad doesn't matter. So I want you to remember it as order doesn't matter. So just to see if we're okay with that, let's look at this question here. We're gonna classify each of these contexts as either being a permutation or a combination. So let's look at context A. Entering a four digit phone password, is that a perm or a com? Well, does order matter? If I enter the digits in the correct order, I will gain access. But if I don't, I'm not going to gain access. So this is definitely a permutation. So we're gonna use the number one. Context B, choosing five people from a committee in which one person is the president, two people are vice president, and two people are secretaries. So I can hear there are assignable roles or tasks. There are positions there. So this is a permutation again. Context C, selecting three paintings to be hung on a gallery wall and then arranging them side by side. Well, there's two parts to this question. The first part is the selecting of the paintings and that's a combination. But then we're arranging them, which is also a permutation. So this is an example of both a permutation and a combination. Let's look at context D. Reaching into a bag of 10 marbles and picking two. Well, it doesn't matter which one I pick first or second, I'm picking two at the same time, so order doesn't matter, this is a combination. So the answer to this question would be one, one, three, two. Let's look at another example. So I have two scenarios here and I wanna classify them as a permutation or a combination. Mateo wants to take three dogs with him on his morning walk. If Mateo owns eight dogs, how many different groups of dogs can he choose for his walk? So he has eight, he's taking three. It doesn't matter the order that he selects the three dogs, as long as the three dogs get to go on the walk. So this is a combination. The second example, there are eight dogs in the cutest dog ever competition. How many ways can first, second, and third place be awarded? So I can hear the positions there, first place, second place, third place. So this is a permutation. So let's go ahead and solve each of these questions. So first one was eight dogs, cutest dog ever competition. How many ways can first, second, and third place be awarded? So again, we said it was a permutation because the order matters. Since it's a permutation, I can use fundamental counting principle. So I have first place, second place, and third place. In first place, I have a choice of eight dogs. Once I choose my first place, I have seven choices for second place and six choices for third place. Multiply all those together and I get 336 ways we can award first, second, and third place. Well, actually, I think it's a little less than that because I'd like to introduce you to Hershey, and he would actually be the first place winner of the cutest dog ever. If you have a dog that's just as cute as Hershey, 
you can send me a picture because maybe they could be second or third. Let's go and look at the other one. Mateo wants to take three dogs on his morning walk. We already said this was a combination. A combination because the order the dogs are selected doesn't matter. Well, if the order doesn't matter, let's look at the arrangement when the order mattered. That's what we just did. So there are 336 ways of arranging when order matters. Well, if order doesn't matter in this case here, we're going to take those 336 and divide them by the ways of arranging the dogs since it doesn't matter the order. So there were three dogs. There's three, two, one ways of arranging those dogs. So since order doesn't matter, I'm going to take 336 and divide it by 6. And I'm going to get that there are 56 combinations. Notice, since order doesn't matter, there's considerably less combinations than there are permutations. So here's my shortcut to finding a combination. I look at the permutations on top and the ways of arranging the objects on bottom. So for example, if I wanted to find the combination of nine objects taken two at a time, I would do the permutations of the two objects, nine times eight on top, and the ways of arranging those two objects, two times one on bottom. Or here's another way of looking at it. If I have nine C2, what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand nine two times, nine times eight. Then I'm going to expand two, two times one. So I have nine times eight, which is 72, over two times one, which is two. So nine C2 altogether would be 36. So let's try this one, eight C3. So in this case here, I'm going to expand eight three times, eight, seven, six. And then I'm going to expand three. So 8 times 7 times 6 altogether is 336. 3, 2, 1, when I multiply those is 6. And 336 divided by 6 is 56. So 8C3 is 56. Let's try another example. How many ways can six players be chosen from a team of 15 athletes if Amber must be included as one of the players? So first thing I want to know is, is this a permutation or a combination? Well, since there's no ordering to the players, there's no positions or assignable roles or tasks, this would be a combination. Players aren't chosen in order. Now, because Amber has to be one of the players, I'm just going to take Amber out altogether. So instead of choosing from 15 athletes, I'm really choosing from 14. And instead of picking six players, I'm really just going to choose five. So this is a combination, and it's a combination of 14 taken five at a time. So let's use that shortcut again. I'm going to expand 14 five times. One, two, three, four, five. Then I'm going to expand five. Five, four, three, two, one. Now, I could go ahead and multiply those, but let's look at a little shortcut. I see that I have 12 on top, which is the same as 4 times 3 on bottom, so that all cancels. I also see I have 10 on top, which is the same as 5 times 2 on the bottom. So really, all I'm left with is 14 times 13 times 11, which I can put into my calculator and see that there are 2,002 ways to select 6 players from a team of 15 athletes when Amber has to be on the team. So permutations use the fundamental counting principle, or the NPR. Since order doesn't matter, a combination is permutations divided by the ways of arranging the object. Now, combinations can be used with a formula. There's three different formulas here. Um, NCR is the same as a rounded bracket and N and R. It's just a different notation. So here's the formula. Permutations divided by the ways of arranging or take the formula for permutations, which is there, and divide it by r factorial. So you can use a formula, or there is a button on your calculator for NCR, math probability three, or on the CE calculators, alpha window eight. So let's try some examples. Employees in a chili cook-off must select specific items from the following list. 
how many different chili recipes are possible. So first of all, is this a permutation or a combination? Well, since they're just selecting items from a list, it doesn't matter the order that you select the ingredients. Okay, so let's look at list A. There are two choices and I am selecting one. So this will be 2C1. In list B, three choices and I'm selecting one, 3C1. In list three, there are four options and I'm selecting three, 4C3. And in list D, there are three options. I'm selecting two, 3C2. In list E, there are four items and I am selecting two, 4C2. So I can just plug this into my calculator exactly like that. And I get that there are 432 different chili recipes. Let's look at this one. There are 10 points on the circumference, which means the outside part of a circle. How many triangles can be formed using these 10 points? Well, to form a triangle, I need three points. It could be any three. This is just one example. So is the way that I select the points or join the points a permutation or a combination? Well, it's a combination. The order I select the three points doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if I select 7, 10, 3, or 3, 7, 10. It's the same triangle. So I have 10 points on the triangle, and I am selecting three of them at a time. Let's try that calculator shortcut to enter it. 10C3, it's equal to 120. So there are 120 different triangles that could be formed. Let's look at this one. After a meeting, there were 120, 120 handshakes. If every person at the meeting shakes hands, how many people were at the meeting? So again, is this a permutation or a combination? So when we're talking about handshakes, handshakes are a combination. It doesn't matter the order that two people shake hands, it's just a handshake. So we don't know how many people are at the meeting, so that's N, but we know it takes two people to make a handshake, and there were 120 handshakes altogether. So to solve this, I need my math formula. So here's my math formula. NCR equals N factorial over N minus R factorial R factorial. So in terms of our equation, NC2 will be N factorial over N minus 2 factorial times 2 factorial. We're going to take this equal to 120 and solve it on the next page. So you can see here I have N factorial N minus 2 factorial over 2 factorial equals to 120. So to solve this, the first thing I notice is 2 factorial is just a number. That's 2 times 1, which is just 2. Now, since I'm dividing by 2, I want to get rid of that by multiplying both sides by 2. If I do it to both sides, I'm there. And those really cancel out. So 2 divided by 2 cancels. In my next step, I'm left with n factorial over n minus 2 factorial equals 240. So what I want to do is expand my bigger factorial. So I start with n. I go 1 less, n minus 1. It doesn't match. So I need to go 1 more, n minus 2. That matches now. So I can stop my factorial there, and then I can cancel out my factorials. Because remember, the only way you can cancel a factorial is with another factorial. So if I can get it there, there it is. Those cancel. So in my next step, what I'm left with is n times n minus 1 equals to 240. So let's apply the distributive property. So I'm going to have n times n, which is n squared, and n times negative 1, which is negative n equals 240. Let's subtract 240 from both sides to set it equal to 0. So now I want to factor two numbers that multiply to negative 240 and add to negative 1. So looking at that, it's n minus 16, n plus 15. I'm going to set each factor to 0. So n minus 16 can equal to 0, or n plus 15 can equal 0. So here I'll just add 16 to both sides. Here I will subtract 15 from both sides. Now since n is the number of people at the meeting, you can't have a negative number of people. So that means there were 16 people at the meeting. 
Now I can check that on my calculator. And so you can see XC2 I put into Y1. And when I have 16 people, I have 120 handshakes. Okay, I want to talk about cards for a minute. The reason I want to talk about cards is because cards are a combination. It is a combination because if you mix up the orders of cards in your hand, you still have the same hand. It's just in a different order and the order doesn't matter. So a couple of facts that you need to know about cards. First of all, there's 52 cards in a deck. Now there are two colors. So 52 divided by two is 26 black, 26 red. There are four suits. And if I do 52 divided by four, I get 13. 13 clubs and spades, which are black cards, and 13 hearts and diamonds, which are red cards. Now within the deck, there are 12 face cards. They're called face cards because they literally have a face on them. Those are the jacks, queens, and kings. So here's a visual of what a deck of cards would look like. All 52 cards, you can see half are black, half are red. Here's my suits, clubs, spades, hearts, and diamonds. So some fun facts that you might not know about cards. And those fun facts I'm gonna share with you are all about the face cards, the jack, the queen, and the king. Now the jack actually is the only face card with colored hair. It has blonde hair. The queen and the king both have white hair. A fun fact about the queen, if you look at all of the queens, the queen of spades is the only queen that faces to the right. And a fun fact about the kings is the king of hearts is the only king without a mustache. Did you know those facts about the face cards? Thought those were pretty cool. Okay, let's do a question with the cards. So how many five card hands contain at least three red cards? Now, at least, at least means a minimum. So that's three red or four red or five red. So in terms of the decks, we know that there are 26 red cards and I want three of them here. 26 red cards, I want four of them or 26 red cards and I want five of them. But it's not just that simple because it is a five card hand. So I wanna make sure I always have five cards. So if I have three red cards, what has to go with that is two black cards. If I have four red cards, what has to go with that? One black card. If I have five red, I'm done. But what that really means is I have zero black cards. So two black cards, that's 26 C2. One black card, 26 C1. And zero black cards, 26 C0. Remember, or means add. So I can put that all together in my calculator and I can get that there are 1,299,480 five card hands that have at least three red cards. Now this was a lot of entering into my calculator because I had to go 26 and then math over to probability down to combinations and then three times and then I had to repeat the process. So I have a little bit of a calculator tip for you, a shortcut way. Since these were all the numbers I needed, 26, C0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 5, into the calculator, I can do it in one keystroke like this. 26, C, use our curly little brackets, 0, comma, all the way up to 5. Now, when you press Enter, it gives you all the numbers. So instead of entering them in all individually, you now know the numeric value. So that's a little trick that can help save you a little bit of time. Just like we talked about common permutations, these are some common combinations. NC0 will always be one. NC1 will always equal to N. And NCR will always equal to NCN minus R. I wanna go over this one in a little bit more detail. 5C2 has a value of 10, and 5C3 also has a value of 10. Here's the reason why. This is looking at the combination of five objects taken two at a time. That would be the same as five objects and I'm not taking three at a time. So these are the same because really three and two add up to my n value, which is five. So this is a useful formula. Let's use it in this example. 
43C19 is equal to 43CX. What is the value of X? So let's go back to that math formula we just saw. NCR is the same as NCN minus R. So if N is 43, R is 19, let's use our formula and substitute our values in. That would be 43C19 equals 43C43 minus 19, which is really 43C19 equals 43C24. So based on that, I see that X is 24. Now let's check that on the calculator. On the calculator, you can see entering them in, they are a very big number, but they are equal. Okay, in this example here, I want to show that the equation 7C2 is equal to 7C5. Now, I know that's a combination because my formula, remember these notations, mean the same thing. So, let's apply that into my equation. This is really 7C2 equals 7C5. So applying it into my formula, I have 7 factorial over 2 factorial, 7 minus 2 factorial, equal to 7 factorial over 5 factorial, 7 minus 5 factorial. Just applying this formula here. Well, in my next step, I'll just simplify what I have in my brackets. 7 minus 2 is 5, 7 minus 5 is 2. You can see on the top I have a 7 factorial, and on the bottom I have 2 factorial, with 2 factorial, 5 factorial with 5 factorial. So these are in fact equal. Let's look at this. This is our last example here where we are going to simplify a combination with the formula. So first thing is I have a combination divided by a combination. My tip is to write it as a division statement. And then I'm going to use my formula to help me out. So NC5 divided by n minus 1 c3. So first thing I'll do is apply the formula and write it as a division statement. Then I'm going to use what I know about dividing fractions. I'm going to keep my first one the same, change this to multiplying, and flip my second fraction like that. So 5 factorial is really 120. 3 factorial in the numerator now is 6. n minus 1 minus 3 is n minus 4. Now, I'm going to get rid of my numbers right away. So 6 and 120, I can simplify that with a common factor of 6, and it's just over 20. So what I'm going to do is I am now going to expand my bigger factorial, which is this n factorial. So I start with n, see how everything else stays the same. So starting with n, I go one less, and I notice I have a match here. As long as it's top to bottom, I'm okay. So those cancel out because that's n minus 1 factorial divided by n minus 1 factorial. Let's look at what we're left with. We are left with this, and now I want to expand my bigger one, which is the n minus 4 factorial. So I have n here, n minus 4 here. So this is my bigger one. I want to expand that one. So starting with n minus 4, I go one less, and that's n minus 5, and I have a match. So that's the factorial, and I know that those cancel. So what I'm left with all together is I'm left with n times n minus 4 over 20. That would be my final answer. Now I can check that on my calculator, original in y1, answer in y2, and I can see in the table that those match. So to summarize our lesson, permutations, order is important, combinations, it's not. In permutations, objects are distinct, but in combinations, they're considered alike. Permutations are assigning jobs, positions, or roles. Combinations are committees with no roles, card questions, selecting. It's always a smaller number than a permutation. So combinations are permutations divided by the ways of arranging objects. And remember that one little trick that NCR is the same as NCN minus R because these two here add up to my N value. So I have some questions for you to do, but since they are combination questions, it doesn't matter the order you do them. You have practice questions and you have textbook questions. You decide the order you want to do them in. 
So I hope this video helped and I look forward to seeing you for the next one.